What up, peeps? Raging Fip here, aka BLF. Now, I know we're about two months into 2017 and the Oscars are coming up, but before we get to that, I just wanted to take a quick look back and count down my top 10 movies of 2016. Now, before I get started, I just wanted to mention that I obviously haven't seen every single movie from the past year. Moana and Kubo and the Two Strings are two movies, for example, I felt had a good chance of making this list had I seen them. Moonlight and Manchester by the Sea are two other big ones that were critically acclaimed that probably had a good chance of making this list had I seen those as well. Another thing that I wanted to clarify is that the movies on these lists aren't necessarily the most critically acclaimed movies of the past year. Uh, they're not necessarily the most well-written, the most well-crafted movies. While I did take that aspect into consideration, I judged the movies on this list mostly on how enjoyable I found them how much fun I had while watching them, and the emotional impact they had on me. So while some of the movies that did make this list aren't necessarily as well crafted as some of the ones that didn't, they definitely fit my taste much more, and I found them more enjoyable or fun to watch. Now with all that being said, let's get to the list. Here are BLF's top 10 movies of 2016. Kicking off the list at number 10 is The Accountant. This movie definitely kept me interested the whole time. The main character, played by Ben Affleck, has an intriguing origin story that keeps unfolding as the story progresses. He's extremely skilled with firearms and hand-to-hand -hand combat, but has very poor social skills, so it's fun watching him interact with other characters in the movie. The action's pretty decent, but nothing too mind-blowing. Overall, this isn't a movie that's left much of an impact on me, though. As time passes, I feel like it's just going to blend in with every other generic action flick. It's definitely the poorest selection on my list, which is why it's at number 10. I actually had a pretty difficult time picking a movie for this spot. I considered Deadpool, Doctor Strange, and even Magnificent Seven. The reason I didn't choose any of those is a conversation for another day. But for now, The Accountant is my number 10 of 2016. Coming in at number 9 is Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Now, I know a lot of fans and critics were extremely disappointed with this movie. I'll be the first to admit that it's got a ton of flaws and definitely isn't as good as a movie titled Batman v Superman should be. I mean, these are the two most iconic superheroes of all time. However, I still had a lot of fun watching the movie and found the majority of it highly enjoyable. First of all, the action was great. The warehouse scene when Batman saves Martha Clark is one of the best action sequences from any Batman film ever and reminded me of the Arkham video game series, which is pretty awesome. Gal Gadot is always a plus in my book. I fell in love with her when I first saw her in Fast Five and I thought she was pretty awesome as Wonder Woman. She had a cool mysterious vibe to her throughout the movie and then absolutely kicked ass against Doomsday. Plus her theme song composed by the legendary Hans Zimmer completely pumped me up. I like Henry Cavill as Superman and I enjoyed the storyline of humanity holding him accountable for collateral damage and questioning whether or not they're better off without him. One of the biggest complaints fans had about Man of Steel was all the collateral damage Superman made while fighting Zod. They basically destroyed Metropolis. I actually thought it was really smart how they turned that flaw into one of the main storylines in this movie. However, that issue was never resolved which is one of the many negatives I've noted about the story. A lot of things were shoehorned in, such as the video clips of The Flash, Aquaman, and Cyborg. Batman's dreams were completely unnecessary and fell out of place. Jesse Eisenberg made an absolutely horrible Lex Luthor and acted like a cartoon character. They didn't really do justice to Doomsday. Batman's motivation to fight Superman is completely unconvincing and not very well written. And the resolution to their fight is incredibly ridiculous. Which is why Batman v Superman only makes it on my list at number 9. Checking in at number 8 on my list is Arrival. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce the director's last name, and I hope I don't butcher it, but after Prisoners, Sicario, and now Arrival, Denis Villeneuve is quickly becoming one of my favorite directors. This is an extremely well-crafted movie. The cinematography is fantastic, the story kept me interested the entire time, and Amy Adams gave a solid performance. I don't want to spoil anything for you, but the twist is great. With these type of movies, I can usually sense when a twist is coming, but this one completely took me by surprise, and the movie just felt very realistic compared to other movies involving alien invasions or encounters. However, it also doesn't have too much of a rewatchability factor. This isn't really a movie I can see myself watching over and over again, like some of the other ones on this list, and it can also be a bit slow if you're not in the mood to watch this type of film, which is why The Rival peaks at number 8. Next up at number 7 is Hacksaw Ridge. Say what you want about Mel Gibson, but the man definitely knows how to direct a damn good movie. And Hacksaw Ridge is just that. 
A very good movie with a compelling true story and solid performances by Andrew Garfield, Vince Vaughn, and Hugo Weaving. The emotional impact was definitely there, and I don't really have too many negative things to say about this movie. But since I don't really find it a fun movie to watch, and I don't really see myself re-watching it as many times as the other movies higher up on this list, Hacksaw Ridge is at number 7. Coming in at number 6 is Suicide Squad. Just like Batman v Superman, I feel like this is another controversial pick. It got a lot of negative reviews from both fans and critics, but I actually found it to be an extremely fun movie. First of all, the soundtrack was great. It added a lot of energy and fit perfectly with the tone of the movie. Second, the characters were a lot of fun. I really enjoy movies and stories that involve an eclectic group of characters. Will Smith was awesome as Deadshot and brought a lot of his charisma to the role. Margot Robbie, another one of my favorites, was perfect as Harley Quinn. She absolutely nailed the character in her performance. I liked Joel Kinnaman as Rick Flagg and the relationship he had with Deadshot, and I even thought they did a decent job giving some depth to Diablo with his backstory. I wasn't crazy about Jared Leto as the Joker, but I don't think that mattered too much since he didn't have that big of a role in the story, plus it's nearly impossible topping Heath Ledger's masterful performance in The Dark Knight. I originally had Suicide Squad much higher on this list, but I recently rewatched it and recognized more of the flaws, such as some of the poorly written dialogue and the fact that the main villain isn't too compelling and has a very generic motivation to rule the world. Besides that though, I still find the movie highly enjoyable, so it made my list at number 6. Alright, so now it's time for my top 5 movies of 2016. Before I move on, I just want to say that the rest of the selections on my list are pretty much interchangeable. I highly enjoyed watching all these movies and had a really tough time putting them in order. I rearranged these films several times, but in the end, this is what I went with. At number 5 is Captain America Civil War. For me, this was the most fun movie of the year. The action was absolutely amazing. The airport scene alone makes it worthy enough to be on this list. The movie has an amazing all-star cast. It was a smartly written sequel to both Captain America Winter Soldier and Avengers Age of Ultron, and was definitely an epic culmination of all the MCU movies so far. We were introduced to two new characters in the MCU, Black Panther, who was very exciting to watch, and Spider-Man. I know a few hardcore Spider-Man fans, and many of them believe this is the best rendition we've seen of the character so far. Overall, it was just a highly enjoyable, star-studded, action-packed movie. The reason it's only at number 5 though is because it wasn't as emotionally impactful as I was hoping it would be. While there are emotional parts in the movie that I definitely felt, it didn't hit me as hard as I would have liked, and that's why Civil War punches out at number 5. Flying in at number 4 is Rogue One, a Star Wars story. It's got a great story with great characters. I absolutely loved K2SO. He might possibly be my favorite character from any movie of 2016. I thought it was cool how this is the first Star Wars movie we have that isn't one of the main episodes. I thought it was genius how they took a flaw from the original Star Wars, the weakness to the Death Star which has been made fun of countless times, and made it make sense. They actually made sense to the Death Star having that weakness. I love the fan service and all the easter eggs littered throughout the movie, and oh yeah. That Darth Vader sequence at the end of the movie is arguably the most badass thing we've ever seen in any Star Wars movie. The main negative thing I have to say about the movie is that it definitely has pacing issues, especially in the beginning of the film. It's sort of all over the place introducing the new characters, and the first time seeing it was pretty jarring. There are a couple other things I could nitpick about Rogue One, but overall it was a fun, exciting, and awesome addition to the Star Wars franchise. Next up at number 3 is The Jungle Book. I was very surprised by how much I liked this movie when I first saw it in theaters. First off, the CG is ridiculously amazing. The scenery, the plants, the animals all look incredibly real. The characters were great and perfectly voice casted. The boy that played Mowgli, I don't know his name, but he did an awesome job playing the part considering number one, how young he is, and number two, the fact that he was talking to imaginary CG characters that weren't really there. And Shere Khan, voiced by Idris Elba, was a fantastic villain. Every time he was on screen, he was a threat. You felt his power and you felt the tension of his presence. They did a great job updating the story. The movie had humor, it had action, there was emotional impact, and I also just want to say that Grey was ridiculously cute. Come on, you're my brother, you have to play with me. Let's go chase some mice. <laughs> Coming in at number two is The Edge of Seventeen. This was a funny, smartly written, touching, and well-made movie. I can't say enough of how great Haley Steinfeld was in this. She did an awesome job playing the part of the main character, and her performance felt completely 100% natural. 
The movie, in all aspects from start to finish, just felt genuine. None of it was cheesy. The emotional impact was definitely there, and it was funny, it was sad, and it was real. The Edge of Seventeen, number two spot, boom. And finally, topping the list at number one is La La Land. Alright, so I saw this movie three times in the theaters, but I have to admit, the first time I saw it, I actually wasn't sure whether or not I was enjoying it until about halfway through the movie. The ending is what really got me the first time around, and it definitely left an emotional impact on me. And afterwards, I realized I kept thinking about the movie. The second time I saw it, I liked it even more and enjoyed the whole thing from start to finish. By the third time I saw it, I already loved it. Emma Stone is absolutely adorable, Ryan Gosling is always charming, and this is at least the third time they've worked together, so they obviously have great chemistry together. I was impressed by their dancing and by Ryan Gosling's ability to play the piano. The cinematography was absolutely amazing. It was an extremely aesthetically pleasing film. It was well made, well shot, and well written with a ton of great quotable lines. And it made me feel. It's funny. It's sad. It makes you feel hope. I love the story of following your dreams and the music's extremely catchy, impressively composed, and completely original. So considering all that, La La Land takes the number one spot. So there you have it, my top 10 movies of 2016. Feel free to let me know what you think about my list. Feel free to share your own thoughts and opinions. Uh, what you thought were your own top 10 movies of 2016. Uh, I'm always down to talk about movies. And thanks for watching and see you next time.